I just installed 1200 amp hours of lithium iron phosphate batteries into this truck camper, and I'm gonna show you the setup. About a year ago, I posted a video sharing my new DC to DC charging setup that charged my 600 amp hours of lithium batteries from the truck's alternators, and that has been working really well. During that video, I did make some mistakes with it. Like I put all of my electronics in the same compartment as the water pump, which I know was a big no-no, but it was a calculated risk at the time. It was just a temporary setup so that I could get things running because we do live in this truck camper full time. So after a couple days of struggling with it, I had to just get it finished. About a month after I posted that video, I got everything changed around so that the water and the electrical system were separated. At the time, I had two 300 amp hour lithium iron phosphate batteries for a total of 600 amp hours. I get most of our power from the truck's alternators, or if we're stationary, I'll run my Honda generator. However, I'm holding off on solar until Starlink releases their new mobile antenna. I don't know how big it's going to be, and that's one of my primary goals is to get the Starlink antenna mounted to the roof. I think that unit's gonna draw about 100 watts continuously and I wanna be able to run it nonstop. Once I have the new Starlink antenna on the roof, then I'll build solar around it and that'll kind of complete my power system. So what I've done now is I've added two more 300 amp hour lithium batteries for a total of 1200 amp hours, which for us is a ridiculous amount of power, but it's been great. We can run pretty much everything we want for an entire week. The biggest demand that I have is keeping my computers running all of the time. As we make videos and other content, I have to upload it. So I usually do that overnight. So I use the computer all day long, and then I have to let it run overnight to do its uploads. That's another reason I can't wait for Starlink because right now our AT&T and Verizon internet is, it works, but it's slow. And I have a 500 gig data cap, which I blow through every month. So with Starlink, it should be unlimited and much faster. I can't wait for that. So while we will be able to charge with solar, it's not gonna be as useful if we go to Alaska or during rainy days, which we've been getting a lot of them lately. So I really like having the charging system from the truck as well as a generator and with solar. I'm gonna pull all these panels off and then show you what's underneath. All right, so of course I had to add some cool LED strip lights just for effect. So this is basically my, my water compartment here. This is the factory electrical compartment. And then I've moved all of my charging and inverter stuff over here. This is a Xantrex XC2000, which I actually really like. It's been a great inverter. These are the Renogy DC to DC battery chargers, each at 40 amps. And over here, this is just a 1000 watt pure sine wave inverter that I use exclusively to run all of my computer stuff. Primarily, this QNAP storage array. This is where I store all of my data, and then I upload all of this to the cloud. So that thing runs pretty much all the time, and it draws about 100, 150 watts continuously. I also have my computer and my port replicator and docking station and a bunch of hard drives that I use for other backups, and that draws a lot of power. Sasha is working right now, but she also has her iPad and laptop and all of that fun stuff. And these little Laker all things, these are black licorice candies, and they're absolutely delicious. They're from Finland. If I can find a link to them, I'll leave them in the description because they are terrific. Let me see if I can get the camera down here. It's really hard to show you this because there's just no space. So these were the original batteries that I had, and I swapped out the terminals. I like these terminals better. They're much stronger. Uh, and the new batteries that I have here are also the, the new terminal style. They're much more durable. They're actually really stout. These are stainless steel cases. Each are 300 amp hours for a total of 1200 usable amp hours. This is a Coleman Mach and it's, I believe a 9,000 BTU AC. I tested it in 90 degree temperatures and I got 12 hours of runtime off of 600 amp hours. So with 1200 amp hours, I could get 24 hours, I guess. We also have this convection oven, which is electric, which is great because we can run it for like an hour, hour and a half, two hours, whatever we need to do to make pizzas or bake roasts, things like that. So we, we use it pretty heavily. But on top of that, it means that I get to use my laptop and my computers without worrying because we, we tend to move every couple days, maybe three days. So we get lots of charging from the truck. I can charge at 80 amps, which is about a thousand watts. So for every hour of driving, that gives me about maybe 10 hours of usage, computer usage. Anytime that I can shut off my electronics, I do to conserve power. 
but once we are set up for a couple days, I tend to leave everything on all the time. I had originally wanted to show you guys the build process of making this, but I unfortunately lost most of that footage. I do have a few clips that I'll throw in there and show you. <laughs> What a disaster. <laughs> Looks great, honey. Thanks, at least it's not hot today. That's true, nice and cool today. This is my main inverter. It lets me run my air conditioner or my microwave or a hair dryer. I had an older Xantrex before and I had a hard time running the AC off of it, but this thing handles it with ease. I don't use it as often as I use my, my computer inverter. That's on all the time. It never shuts off. And we charge our electronics, our drone batteries, our phones, everything from that inverter. While we're driving and we're running the DC to DC battery chargers, if it's over say 80 degrees outside, I, I tend to take this, this panel off right here because these chargers vent underneath and the heat comes up through here. I would like to add a thermostatically controlled fan to help circulate air and keep this compartment cool even without removing this step. Do you guys have any suggestions for thermostatically controlled ventilation of some type? Uh, I've looked at cooler guys and a bunch of other stuff on Amazon. I would love to hear your suggestions for cooling this compartment. Just let me know down in the comments. I'd really appreciate it. Now, I did make this frame out of aluminum that I got from Home Depot or Lowe's. I'm not super happy with it. The batteries have not moved. I've driven about 5,000 miles with them and they haven't moved at all. But my concern is getting in a car accident or if I tipped over or something like that. I don't think that this flimsy aluminum is going to hold all of this. Each one of these batteries, I think, is about 66 pounds, 67 pounds. We're pushing close to 300 pounds with all of this, the cabling. So one of the other considerations that I had was in the back of this battery system. Let me climb in here. This is where one of our Aldi radiators are, and I didn't want all the heat in here. I built this foam insulation around it. I also wrapped the heater fins with like six layers of aluminum foil to help stop the convection and built this piece of insulation. It's just getting cold enough now for me to test this out. And it's actually kept it nice and cool because I don't want it to be heating the back of the batteries. So now this compartment stays very cool. There's very little heat coming out of this radiator. So this is just um, like shelf matting. I put it on here to help hold this floor panel in place. It protects the batteries from scratching because we walk on this fairly frequently. So I got my bus bars, my, my power distribution bus bars down here. Kind of had to make some modifications to it. Oops, I'll find that later. I got all my negatives here. This goes to my Renogy battery monitor. For the money, these things actually work really well. Ugh. I changed out all of my breakers for these inline fuses. These are Blue Sea, and they're awesome. I really like them. This is the power coming in from the batteries. So the batteries are daisy chained which i i don't like i i would like to rewire these but you know i'm limited on space as you can see they come in through the wall here and then they come through and then they come up to the main fuse over here this could give me quite a bit of power if i needed it i never draw more than like 180 amps that's my absolute max 
In last week's video, I asked for your questions about this system, and I'm gonna do my best to answer them right now. And if I do get your name wrong, I apologize ahead of time. The first question is from John Eskridge, and he asked why I didn't go with a 3000 watt inverter. The simple answer to that is because a 2000 watt inverter will run our AC or our microwave or our hair dryer, and those are all our biggest load appliances. Running a 2000 watt inverter lets me stick with zero gauge cables, which are much more manageable. The only time that a 3000 watt inverter would be a benefit to us is if we wanted to run the microwave and the air conditioner at the same time, which doesn't really happen. So we don't see the need to upgrade. However, if someone out there wants to give me a 3000 watt inverter charger, I'd be happy to install it. The next question is from Sport Roamer Adventures. They wanna know what batteries I chose for this project. These batteries are actually of my own design. I worked with a company to design them, have them built and sent to me. I wanted to build my own batteries, but I live in a camper and don't have a lot of space to store parts. And I don't think this is a project that I wanted to do on a picnic table at some campground. So after a lot of research, I found that it was actually cheaper and easier for me to find a company to work with, to manufacture batteries to my spec and have them shipped to me. I got the first batch about a year and a half ago, and then I got my second set of batteries about three or four months ago, and I got those installed, and now I have a total of 1200 amp hours. The main features that I was looking for was maximum power in the minimum space. That's why I went with a metal case design, because it's very space efficient. They fit into corners neatly, and they stack together well. I chose a BMS that has Bluetooth connectivity so that I have full control over all of the settings, and I can monitor the state of charge from anywhere in the camper. I think I'm gonna make a separate video to discuss the batteries in greater detail, so make sure you stay tuned for that. The next question is from Wingnut Bert. I love that name. He wants to know if my DC to DC chargers are okay to mount back to back like that. Uh, they are. According to Renegy's manual, the cooling spaces need to be on the top and the sides. And what I did is no different than flush mounting it to a wall, but I did leave a little gap in between. Still have space in the middle for, for cooling. Airflow goes the same direction. One is not intaking the exhaust of the other. So I have like maybe a quarter inch of space between those for, for cooling. I've run them for days at a time, you know, like five, six, seven, eight hours at a time, and they stay cool enough. I mean, they do get warm, but they never overheat. And I just opened up that little floor panel and all the heat vents out. At this point, I probably have nearly a thousand hours of runtime on them. That's my guess. And they haven't given me any problems. They're working really well. Next question is from John Eskrich again. Can you explain the need and how to isolate the truck alternator from the lithium battery bank? Well, I made an entire video about that and I'll leave a link to it up here. The summary of that is anytime you have two different types of batteries, whether it be lead acid and AGM or lead acid and lithium or lithium and AGM, you wanna keep them separate. They have different charge profiles, different voltages, and you don't want them connected all the time. In that video, I go into greater detail and it should answer all of your questions. If it doesn't, just let me know and I'd be happy to answer it in the comments. The next question is from Jay Montserrat and he asks, Scott, you have a plug under your camper on the driver's side. Please tell us how it works and is it standard on your 920 or an add-on? That plug is to run the DC side of my refrigerator off of the truck. It was a factory installed option and they gave you a kit. Big cable, it's basically a 50 amp cable that you can route to your truck. They don't really give you a lot of details on how to do it, but I was able to figure it out. The refrigerator, when it's running off of DC, draws about 17 amps. So when I have the truck running, I have a button on the inside. It's for RAM, it's called upfitter switches that I have it wired into. So let me also try to do that in a separate video. This is great because I'm getting lots of video ideas. The next question is from John McKenzie or McKenzie. He asks, does your 2000 watt inverter meet all of your needs? And I would say it does. It will run any of our appliances one at a time. The only time that's an issue is if we're running the air conditioner and we want to run the microwave at the same time. But that's happened a handful of times and we just turn the air conditioner off, run the microwave and turn the air conditioner back on. It might be nice, but for us, we just, we simply don't need it. It, it wouldn't really give us any extra benefit. So I'm very happy with it. And the new Xantrex that I got is really good. The next questions are from Jim Penn and he actually has three questions in here. So let me break it down. His first question is, how long does it take to charge the batteries from the alternator? Well, if the batteries were completely dead to fully charged, it would take about 15 hours. That's running at 80 amps of charging for 1200 amp hours. However, there are some losses in there, so it might take a little bit longer than that, but that's generally not how we use it. I keep the batteries somewhere between 20 and 90%. And because we only drive a couple hours a day, we never actually really fully charge the batteries. The only time that happens is when we have shore power. 
or on the rare occasion that I run the generator. One of the great things about lithium is that you don't have to fully recharge them. In fact, it's best not to. Lithium really likes to stay somewhere between 20% and 80%, and that's generally where I keep them. In fact, right now, my batteries are sitting at 42%, and when we head off tomorrow and drive for maybe two or three hours, it's probably gonna bring them up to 60, 62%, something like that. And then that's enough for us to sit for another couple days. His next question is, how many days will the batteries last with some air conditioner use while boondocking? Well, the air conditioner use is a big one. Uh, that's a huge draw. That pulls about 1200 watts while it's running. And then when it's off and just the fan is blowing, it's still drawing like two or 300 watts. It's a pretty heavy fan. Just running our computers and our daily like water pump and lights, we can go about six, seven, maybe eight days on the batteries. With some air conditioner use, I'm gonna probably be down to maybe half of that. From the math that I've done, the 1200 amp hours from a 100% charge to a 0% charge would give us about 24 hours of air conditioner runtime. But we never do that. Generally, we run it for like an hour, maybe two hours to take the heat out when we're going to bed, and then that's it. But even that type of usage sucks the power up pretty fast. But I would say for the average person, 1200 amp hours is gonna let you run your air conditioner for, let's say, a total of 12 hours, and you could break that up over several different days and still have plenty of power to run all your other stuff, a coffee pot, the microwave, lights, and still have some reserve power at the end. But that's really just an estimate. It entirely depends on how you use them. His next question is, are we happy with the setup and is there anything I would do differently? I would say right now I'm very happy with the setup. I like having the two inverters. It gives me some redundancy and it keeps my computers nice and protected. I love having the extra capacity of the batteries. It's probably overkill but it's kind of fun. I enjoy the process of building stuff and I like having the extra power. There's been many times that we found the place to camp that we really liked and having the extra battery power means that I don't have to break out the generator. And his next question is, is solar even worth messing with? Absolutely. My next step is to get solar. I'm just waiting for that Starlink antenna so I know how much space I still have to work with for solar. Right now we only have 200 watts, which isn't enough. I think if I could just get four to 500 watts of solar on the roof, that that would really extend our camping times. Granted, it wouldn't keep up with heavy duty air conditioner usage, but it would give us an extra few days before we had to charge our batteries again. So that's all of the questions for now. And it sounds like I have a few more videos that I need to make soon. So that's my setup. It's a little cleaner than last time and I don't have that water issue anymore. So I'm pretty happy with that. If you didn't see my original video about the DC-DC charging system, I'm gonna leave a link to it, I think like right up here. And this other video is cool too. So you can watch either one of these and it's good. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.